How's it going guys? I actually need to start this video off on a bit more of a serious note. As you guys know, I've had my good friend Marco over here. He was regularly on my channel before. We would catch up quite often. As you know, he's also from the US, but has been living here in the Philippines. I just don't know where he is. And so if any of you can help me out with trying to find Marco, maybe we're mute. Oh, come on. Here this guy is. All right. I thought you had died in a fiery car crash somewhere, but here you He's are. Back. You. I'll be back. I said that, and here I am. Right. Believe me now or hear me later, I am back. All pumped up. All right. Maybe we have to send him away already <laughs> now. So, how's it going, buddy? Where have you been? I have been. Oh, that's loud. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, where have I been? Well, one month in Thailand. Okay. And one month in India. Those are two very different places. They are. All right, so let's back up a bit. Thailand. Thailand, I've been to Thailand many times and I was actually going back there to see a couple of friends, uh, even a possible romance. By friends, he means chicks, true yeah. or not? Uh, both, actually both. Actually friends, actually, okay. Actually both. Very good, and where were you, what cities are you? Uh, Bangkok and Chiang Rai. Okay, Chiang Rai. Or as they say, Chiang Rai. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, those two places, not Chiang Mai, which is the big, you know, tourist spot. Sure. Um, so, yeah. so, so tell me about that place. I've been to Bangkok multiple times, right. but what is... Chiang Mai, uh, Chiang Rai is uh, not Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai has a big digital nomad presence, lots of tourists, um, whereas Chiang Rai is a little smaller, but has some incredible temples, Buddha statue, you know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, the white temple, the blue temple. I mean, it is it is gorgeous in many ways. Sure. And so... Um, but smaller town? Smaller town. Okay. Smaller town. All right. And then Bangkok, big bustling city. But let me, let me add this. I got there in what was the once in 100 years flood. So there I was at the flood. The Mekong was... And I mean, it took out half the city. So that was, that was big. Wow. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, somewhere you would live? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, um, and I, when you say that, no. Okay. However, bring the right woman into my life, and yeah, maybe. All right. And what about Bangkok? Bank, well, Bangkok's just huge metropolis, and uh, overall, I don't like it. Uh, you certainly can find anything there and do anything. But I was just there uh, a week as I was preparing to go to India. Such so, but and for me, I absolutely love Bangkok. Uh, One of my that, favorite yeah. cities uh, anywhere in the world. I haven't spent enough time there, but I would very happily live. Yeah, I love. I do love the tourist section in Bangkok. I forget the name of the river that comes through there that has the boats that go up and down. You can see temples and all sorts of really cool things that uh, I do enjoy. But Bangkok, yeah, that that city is just huge. It is a monster, but I, I think very clean. Great public transportation. Clean. Yeah, uh, but but if I'm going to get the room for the same price here, it's going to be literally like there's no room for me on my bike in the room. It's so in Thailand. Cool. Yeah, in Bangkok. Now in, in uh, Shanghai, I'm going to get a bigger place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how would you compare prices for you? Uh, about between the Philippines and Thailand. Uh, it, relatively the same overall. Relatively the same. It's a little more expensive in the big cities such as Bangkok or you're going to get a smaller room, you can make some compromises, but relatively the same. Yeah, for me, I don't know. We were talking about that. For me, I felt like it was a little bit cheaper there, and I felt like the accommodations were a little bit nicer. Like I was just in Ilo Ilo City, which is kind of smallish right. town over here. You know, it's a city, but right. uh, in the business park there, I paid about, well, 5,700 pesos, about 100 bucks a night for a, uh, I mean, it was a relatively nice hotel. But I just have a feeling in uh, Thailand it would have definitely not cost a hundred. Okay, bucks. all right, yeah, yeah. Well, you you live in a different world than I live in, in terms of hundred dollar a night. No, I don't. I don't pay that anymore. Twenty, twenty's my max. All right, all right. So you mentioned that you went there for a friend and a possible romantic interest. Yeah, I had met somebody two years ago when I was there. But we only got to interact at a very, very short amount of time. She had to go, I had to go, and so we kept in touch. And so this was, okay, I'm coming back. Let's see if there's anything here. Yeah, there wasn't. wasn't. There wasn't. wasn't. But just from the beginning, you knew that, or did that no. kind of... No, I thought, okay, th there's a lot I like about her. And, th and this would take us into the discussion of general comparisons of women. And uh, I'll try to do this so I don't offend my Filipino, Filipina sisters, brothers out there. 
but prepare to be offended. Prepare to be offended. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, trigger warning. Um, so in Thailand, women are going to be a little more serious, a little more um, serious in a relationship, or just their demeanor. Demeanor. More demeanor. They're they're more demeanor. Yeah, yeah more demeanory. Uh, which uh, slower to get into relationship to serious relationship. Now there is a whole section of uh, Thai women who are out to get you, and they'll jump into your wallet very quickly. But uh, I feel though that in the big cities or places like Pattaya, like when I talk to guys that I, I'm friends with, you know, Western guys that live in Thailand, it just seems like they're way more into. Financially transactional They're, relationships in Thailand compared to the Philippines. I've heard that. I haven't experienced that. But of course, my the cross section of what I am talking about in Thailand is very small, and uh, of the couple women that I've met or dated. So I, I can't really speak to that. But I have also heard that that yeah. things like allowance is something you talk about. Yes, yeah. uh, because I, I've had uh, guys that watch the channel that have come to the Philippines and they'll ask me with a serious face, you know, so what is a normal allowance yeah. to pay a Filipina? Right. This is the normal allowance in case you're wondering. Nothing. <laughs> that's not your child. But in, you know, Thailand, I think, yeah, that's just a, kind of a normal uh, type of thing, whereas in the Philippines, that's super red. Yeah, flag. and it would make sense from, again, this demeanor standpoint, they're more business-orientated, orientated, uh, entrepreneurial, much more than here. Now we have a lot, we meet a lot of Filipinos who want to be an entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. I'd say there's a big difference of actual know how and perseverance and persistence of what it really, the reality of opening a business. What does that take? And, and boy, the women I have met there, the few that I, they, they really do know how to run, operate a business, get serious about it, and, mm -hmm. and make it work. Sure, sure, absolutely. So I think that there's, there's definitely a difference in Asian cultures. Oh, you know, absolutely. so I think. You know, China, Japan, South Korea, and then maybe a little bit Vietnam and Thailand, but probably depending on the people, are a little bit more serious, are, you know, a bit I more... I mean, it really the is. The, you start in the Philippines and you move north. The further north you move, the more you're going to get a Chinese, uh, stereotypical, more serious type person. It just, it, it literally goes up with uh, latitude, longitude, um, it really does. Sure. Now, though, though, I mean, cultures in South Korea and Japan are going to be super different than China. But you mean in terms of the seriousness yeah. of the relationship? Yeah. Yeah. And are you going to let me save myself now? Yes. Okay. So I'm sitting in the Philippines. The Philippines is still my base of operations, and there is a good reason. Uh, obviously, I have uh, this... this uh, Friends that he abandons. Dumbledore over here that... <laughs> Uh, I see, but uh, and other friends as well. But uh, in terms of as you know, my continued search, I'm here. So then you know, it's the the friendliness, the sweetness, the caring that exists. You're in talking my... about me or Filipinas? Oh, sweetheart, thanks, dear. <laughs> uh, it it really exists here as as nowhere else in Asia that I have been yet. Sure, and you've been to Cambodia. I mean, you've been I've been to all places. I've been to Mong. He's been there, done that. Been there, done that. So, so the thing that you said when you first came back to the Philippines that made me really laugh yes. wasn't so much in relation to Thailand. It was in relation to the second place you went, which was India. Correct. You remember what you told me? I did. I think I was walking. It was my first day back. This was like three days ago. And I was walking down the street and I left you a voicemail. And I said, I'll tell you one thing you would never before hear come out of my mouth, but how happy I was that things were so organized and I felt safe and clean. clean. And I'm like... I'm sure you're talking about the Philippines, buddy. Organized, safe, and clean. I mean, I, I get the safe part, but organized and clean. Yeah, yeah. If you go to the inner cities, to the, the cities of India, it is so chaotic. It is very dusty, very dirty in most of the, the big cities. Now, there are little parts that have started to pop up that are like Makati and such, but uh, yeah, it is. And I sent you some pictures of, yeah. I mean, you, the air, oh, you know, I get asthma symptoms. Within about three or four days, I'll get asthma symptoms in uh, in these cities. And uh, that would include Bangladesh as well, that, mm -hmm. uh, mainly Dhaka, that it's just hard to breathe. It's, you'll go out, you come in, and you can just feel the dust, the whatever it is. You know, it's crop burning sure. season. Oh, we just had Diwali, and we shot off 18 billion fireworks, and the smoke hangs for five 
you know, days around the city. Literally, probably 18 billion, right? Like, literally. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you know, I did take some video. I haven't made anything yet, but it's a little scary. I, when I was growing up in the 60s, it was, <laughs> I could go to the fireworks stand during July 4th and, and buy these explosives. Sure. And have fun with explosives. Sure. Yeah. And sure. we all know that when, you know, you, it's a good thing to give children pyrotechnics because sure. they love that stuff. Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember uh, in the U.S. during the 80s having, you know, M80s and I mean, stuff like that. It's a dynamite, for God's sakes. And so they had the there. And so I, I've got a couple more gray hairs because of Diwali, the lead up and, and afterwards that things so loud that uh, if, if as they go off and I'm fairly close, literally the concussion, you can feel it through your chest mm. and your ears are ringing. Mm. So I probably still have a little what we call... Uh, shell shock, battle fatigue, or PTSD. Right. So no loud, no loud noises. All right. No Everybody keep noises. it quiet for, for Marco. For old Marco. Get off my lawn. Yes. So if you're starting to wonder about Marco's sanity, after all you have just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tough segue, tough crowd here. Tough he did crowd. just, you know, abandon me for a couple months. Oh. And I have many friends here in the Philippines. So you've been to India. I mean, this wasn't your first rodeo in India. How many times have you been there? This was my third trip. So I've done Kolkata for three weeks. I've done uh, Chennai, Kodi Canal in the south for three weeks. And then this was a month in more the northwestern uh, part of it up towards. And then I did go to Dharmashala. Now, why don't you go out of New Delhi, a 10-hour bus ride up into the mountains to hang with the Dalai Lama. And let me tell you, he and I are like this. <laughs> no, work. no, they're not people. <laughs> but but what brings you, you know, back and back and yet a third time back to India? Um, there is there is a magic about India, mm-hmm. and we can go all the way back to the Beatles and Steve Jobs and all these people that go to India for enlightenment. Now, I have never gotten there for those purposes. If I was when I was in my new age days and mm-hmm. when I was younger, I may have. But it, there is a magic there. Mm-hmm. There is a magic and accepting, and especially in Dharma Shala, because the, the Dalai Lama has become a magnet for spiritual seekers. So all religions, a lot of New Age, a huge Israeli population of mm-hmm. liberal Jews who are going to do New Age, searching candles, crystals, yoga, you name it, it's there. And people are very educated and smart and deep and want to talk. And so I love that. Sure. Well, but the spiritual side of it, I mean, it's a bit far from where you are these days, but the intellectual conversation and all the rest. And I got to tell you, if somebody, even though I'm an atheist, uh, hard carrying atheist, I, I can jump, as I do with you, jump into very deep spiritual conversations respectfully. And, 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 I, and I did with them. So whether, you know, philosophy and religion, it's not like separate. There's Sure. Right. There's a crossover. Sure. There's a, well, I think philosophy and ethics and all of that. Yeah, a lot of those things. There's a lot of, of crossover. But the intellectual side of it, you you were talking about a place that you were for a while that I thought I would love. Oh, you uh, so so tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. So I found this hostel, and and I found out there's many like this. This one was pretty unique, where it, the owners uh, created it to be exactly that—a hub, a magnet for people like myself, like you, who love jumping into deep philosophical, Mm -hmm. you know, conversations about life, about politics, about really everything. And and I think if I ever were to go to India, and that's, sorry, Indian people, I love you, but very far down my list of places that I'm dying to go. But that, that and the food would be why. why Yeah, yeah, and I did. I thought of him all the time because you cannot go five feet down a street without seeing you know, the, the restaurants advertising either all vegetarian, all vegan, or, you know, half and half. I mean, it's just always a choice because it's part of some of the religion there. Sure, sure. Yeah, the way Margot talks like this, that I'm an atheist. That's how I talk about it. <laughs> and I'm a vegetarian. Like that. Yes, yes. Well, do you see uh, yet another trip back to Thailand or India? Uh, Thailand, uh, pro- not necessarily. And nothing, uh, you know, in terms of the, in the south, Phuket, the islands and the, the diving and the free dive, yeah, that could be a possibility because it is wonderful and I, I've had some great trips there. Uh, but, but there's no great pull to go back to Thailand. Uh, but India, there's now a pull to one, at least one more part of India, and that is the southwest uh, called Goa. And I've been told that Goa has just been sprouting up as this kind of great new place for 
digital nomads, again, people like myself, progressive, educated, mm -hmm. and it's just, uh, and it's got also wonderful beaches, great diving. So that would probably be the next trip. And interesting Goa, because there's a new Indian restaurant just opened up not too many months ago here in IT Park called Goa Nights. Really? And the owner is uh, from there. From there. Yeah. G-O-A. Correct. Wow, that is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, that'd be interesting. You don't even got to go to India. You just go down the street here in IT Park. Well, yeah. maybe that's our next, uh, you know, dinner together. Or yeah. Something. Go there and then we can. Yeah. They... And you know him? I met him. I, I wouldn't Sorry, say. Sorry, no, I'm going I wouldn't say I know him, but I, oh, I, oh. I met him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah that'd yeah. be cool. Absolutely. I'll throw out a little Hindi. So interesting to hear more of India and not so much of Thailand because I think you were interested. Maybe you would find a partner over there. So what are your thoughts now after being in Thailand, back in the Philippines? You know, before you left here some months ago, you were a little bit sick of dating in the Philippines, oh, right? Yes. So, so what's your thoughts now after being away for a couple months? Sick is such a strong word. Such a strong word. I was a little exasperated. Can we say that? We could say that, but I don't think it was Too quite far. true. Yeah. So anyway, it was. It was a little like, okay, and I knew I needed a break. I did. I got the break. It was, and it was good that I took the break. You get a comparison. You take a breath. There, I, I don't walk down the street in either Thailand or in, especially India, and uh, women constantly eyeballing me. Mm -hmm. Okay, there, there was a break from that. Now, mm -hmm. I know you and I talk about how wonderful that is here. We feel privileged because of circumstances that that happens here. But for me, at some point, uh, you know, it kind of like, okay, I just need a break. I need to be by myself uh, without that kind of distraction. Sure. No. Well, and I think part of it is, uh, you know, meeting a lot of people but not meeting the right person. Correct. Sure. So today, do you feel a bit more hopeful about Finding a partner here in the Philippines? I actually do, but I can't go into all of that. All right. Might be for a future, a future video. I do, I do know a bit about that. Yes. All right. Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> I, I see what you did there, buddy. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> all right. Well, Marco, great to have you back. Good to be back. Uh, wonderful. And uh, to all the Filipinos out there, uh, this is a special place. It really is. It really a is spot. a special place yeah. in so many ways, and it is great to be back and in the vibes. And like uh, on Sunday afternoon, taking a walk up towards Marco Polo and just how friendly and jumping into conversations with everybody. Yeah. You know, the 98 year old sitting there with his red horse, or, you know, the 20 year old serving coffee. It, it is. It's a very, very special place. Yeah, yeah. Very much agreed. Love the Philippines. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here, helping me find this uh, crazy guy again. Make sure and drop a comment below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch. Take care.